morning everybody and welcome to health talk i am your host dr niru prasad with my background in pediatrics and emergency medicine affiliated with henry ford health system st joe oakland and bomar the theme of our health talk today is a uh, is adult mental health joining us today as of my guest speaker is dr nabila khan and she is doing a residency at the providence hospital and she is going to highlight our viewers about what are the issues that we face with our health mental health issues we are talking about mostly adults that includes men and women yeah. so thank you thank you navila and uh, welcome to my show thank you dr prasad for having me it's such an honor to be here yeah and also can you give your introduction to our viewers yeah i'm a first year family medicine resident i'm doing my residency through ascension providence at southfield i did my medical school through michigan state's college of osteopathic medicine so i'm also a do doctor as well so that's very good you know and i know you since you were in the school era right. <laughs> then you went to college and then you now you graduated yeah. so proud to have you Thank here you. so so tell us about the what are the general you know you you go through those uh, I think your rotation is mental health right yeah so please please tell our viewers so what are the issues that you are seeing what kind of issues you see there yeah. during your residency your, your yeah. residency I think the covid-19 pandemic really placed a spotlight on what mental health is and you know uh-huh. bringing awareness of what men- mental health encompasses um and especially being a family medicine doctor we see patients of all ages right. of all chronic health problems mental health included mm-hmm. so i think it's always important to kind of focus on what mental health actually is and you know the components right. of it and i think it encompasses a lot of just how we are in terms of you can have a diagnosis of anxiety or depression right. but there are also things like your physical health that can affect your mental health as well things that we talk about a lot of stress stress um You that know, is number one isn't it number one yeah <laughs> and exactly i think yeah. um you know the covid pandemic when we were isolated and we couldn't right. really go out and see our friends and family really brought to light you know how is the mental health of especially adults here in america that we don't talk about as much right yeah, yeah. so napila i just got done i did a series of my video production about children's mental health mm-hmm. i did a lot of research on this issue and i f- i found out my conclusion is that since the ch- a child is 3 4 years old right their 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 brain develops but mm-hmm. and and not enough to to grab everything right. so they are anxious and they yeah. are but now we are talking about the adult mm-hmm. male and the female yeah. now they are all you know s- s- adults and they have in the independent they have to support right. their family so what is the incidence do you see this more in the men or women or they it is equal yeah i think that's a really great question we have screenings in place mm-hmm. there's one called a phq2 or a phq9 okay. and it gives we give questionnaires to our patients asking about sleep habits stress mm. stress um and those kind of things in my practice personally i've seen a good equal amount between oh, uh, yeah. males and females in terms mm. of mental health stress um the diagnoses can kind of vary but i think it's equal across the it board it is equal yeah I did some research on this since you were coming to my show mm-hmm. and they are saying that basically it is equal mm-hmm. men and women right. but women get more emotionally labile yeah, yeah and I think sometimes it's hard for um you know sometimes we see a trend of female patients tending to be a little bit more open and right, uh, yeah. more conversational about these topics mm-hmm. sometimes it's a little bit harder to approach with the males but i think once you can establish rapport with them they're more open to discussing they are more. so now you you are working in the your office mm-hmm. you know with the with this patient so initially when somebody goes to your office what is the first thing you do I mean you will do a general physical examination and all that. Yeah, so I think if someone's coming in 
uh, for you know specific for mental office, health yeah. yeah concerns then the best thing to know is to t- get to know them and talk to them a little bit more you know what are their concerns what are their symptoms that they might be having what are stressors in life especially you know with every population around um, there's a lot of social determinants of health that can exactly. impact exactly. mental health as yeah. well and so getting just a better background yeah. for the patient before I go into a physical and also now before you get started you will have a uh, internal medicine or somebody's evaluation make sure they don't have like a diabetes high blood pressure yep. a thyroid yeah those, we have right? all those records okay. through our office as well okay yeah and including the immunizations and all that. yeah exactly <laughs> yep we try to get as much information on our our patients you know medical history surgical what are all yeah. the factors that are contributing right. um, for the patient and after that then spend a lot of time talking to them because yeah. that is a big issue isn't it for them yeah they just want to open up to somebody yes yeah. yes and i think it's important that we allow that the patients the time and the space to do so unfortunately i think in medicine we you know 20 minute appointments and 15 and so we yeah, might seem right. a little bit rushed but here yeah yeah but sometimes it's important yeah. to just make sure because you know, i remember nabila from my past experience you know working in different urgent care centers mm-hmm. i mean i see them for anxiety but i don't have enough time yeah. talking to them because yeah. the next patient is waiting in the other room so basically to evaluate somebody around the for the mental health Mm -hmm. you need more time right yeah Yeah. i think time but also maybe goal setting i think especially with mental health there are so many components to it that try to address one or two and then make sure that the patient has an appropriate follow-up time too you know come back let's check in how is your mental health is it better is it the same right what are some things we've changed and what we can we do so i like to see my patients back in about three to four weeks three to four weeks Mm -hmm. you follow them up And, and then evaluate the home situation very important especially right. for the for the women's mental health you know yeah. how is their personal life how is their family life with the husband with the children and all that same yeah. thing with the men yes you, talk about their jobs and all those yeah i think for both i try to ask the same questions across the board you know mm-hmm. work is it school children family you know how are yeah. what are people dealing with in their life that could be leading to this or even like we talked about medical history right of course of course that's very important to yeah and you know this covid era yeah. that has that is a lot to do with the yeah. whole thing with the children centers right even the senior citizens yeah, huge yeah, impact yeah. because they because they are alone at home yeah. lonely due to the covid nobody comes to see them yeah. so they are depressed right yeah definitely we see it in our older populations as well you know and it can show up as things that people necessarily might not recognize um, right. like just like sleep disturbances people just think oh i mm-hmm. can't fall asleep but there could be more to it underlying right so after we have after you have established the diagnosis of course you will do those dst evaluation mm-hmm. tests right mm-hmm. and that tells you who stands where right mm-hmm. okay so then once once you have done with them then what is the future what what is the next pro- next procedure from for you to do for yeah so sometimes establishing a diagnosis can come in a couple visits you know right, figuring out yeah. more but like i said i think especially with initially talking to a patient it's kind of what are goals that they want to have if it's stress or anxiety right, or yeah. depression what are some things that we can work on um, before their next follow up so so some patients they're more open to doing um, what we call mindfulness so kind yeah. of being oh, that was my next yeah. question the <laughs> mindfulness yeah you said oh, so many yeah. articles yeah it's gotten really big because again um, kind of shedding a light what mindfulness means in terms of just being aware of your situation in yourself. Yeah. Um so we have some patients that we like to give some tips on how to practice mindfulness right. and how to start. Other patients, you know, may be more comfortable with starting a medication at this point. Right. If that's okay with, we also give referrals for behavioral health specialists right. if they need to see somebody in therapy. We try to be as supportive of our patients of where they want to go for their goals. Right. So basically, you know, 
most important thing from my clinical experience, the personal and mindfulness yeah. means more like, you know, meditation and all those. Yeah. That helps a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, I think mindfulness... Can you comment on that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we talk about it a lot. Obviously, I know medical schools are starting to incorporate it a little bit is, more. Is that so? Yeah, that okay. was my first exposure to mindfulness was in medical school. We had oh. a small course in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really helpful to understand, yeah. you know, what is mindfulness? And everybody says, you know, it's meditation, but it can be it can so be more. many more things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. And we talk about it in residency as well and, you know, yeah. talking to our patients about it and simple things just like noticing your breathing um you know breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth you know doing counting that can be mindfulness we talk about certain things of just you know being present you know just sitting and being really aware of your surroundings Mm. um a lot of people you know michigan's weather is great right now um (laughs) so just taking yeah just taking the time to you know be outside be outside outside. of your space from work or Mm -hmm. if you're at home all the time is there somewhere else you can kind of be so really focusing on being present Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's another component of kind of emotional awareness so if that is very important isn't it yeah Yeah. how do you do that yeah so obviously practice with everything (laughs) Um, but you know just saying you know I'm upset right now and you might not have to analyze it or you Mm -hmm. know what's going on but just kind of being present with yourself if you're upset Mm -hmm. or you're sad and just being okay with it you know I think we're always taught to fix emotions of course we are always um, but sometimes you just have to say you know what I'm sad right now and it will pass but just being more you know mindful and aware of the mm-hmm. things you're going through but you know from my own personal experience and talking to with my clinical practice all these years I have noticed the most significant factor yeah mind mindfulness is that you remove the clutters from your brain yeah get rid of all the negative thoughts yeah. and and think positive yeah I th- yeah i think a lot especially you know my generation and younger we have yeah. access to so much all the time i mean <laughs> if i'm on my computer i'm on my phone the tv right, is on yeah. you know and sometimes that you know multitasking can be okay but then i feel like it can add to the stress because you I, feel like ex- you need exactly, to do yeah. so much and so exactly like you said kind of focusing on of one the thing pos- negative thoughts yeah get rid of them think positive you mm-hmm. know that's what my next next uh, podcast is going to be about graduating seniors yeah. you know think positive so what i uh, wanted to ask you what is your opinion and your advice about how much social platform there should be involved how much of uh, how yeah. much of computer and texting do you advise for for us people like yeah adults i think that's difficult because now <laughs> you know especially so much with work can become virtual so if you're in front of a computer I all day know, or yeah. you're working from home but i think the biggest thing is you know if it's for work it's required but the important thing is to take breaks from it break from you know that. 20 20 20 rule you know you take a 20 minute break do something else for 20 minutes look away from your phone your tablet your computer for 20 minutes um i think limiting before you go to sleep is the biggest factor that that I see especially right. we are for going adults. to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm jumping ahead for no, you. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. just, you know, I always say like a bedtime routine, an hour or mm. 30 minutes before, it's so easy to lay in bed and scroll right. through your phone, look on Instagram, Twitter. Right. But, you know, really having a set time, an hour, at least 30 minutes before to put your phone down, you know, do whatever it is you need to do before bed to kind of prepare yourself mentally to go to sleep. So for our viewers to know that if most of the people are virtual, they work on the computers, but Mm -hmm. still, according to Dr. Khan, they should take a break, Mm -hmm. like every two, three hours, take a break, relax, do something else, get get, get a snack drink some yeah, water you know do something else yeah so that's so so this this is um, this is the good way to to keep your mentally happy mm-hmm. 
So now let us talk about the night time. Right. I have a lot of problem falling asleep. Right. <laughs> you tell me, what should I do? What should I do? I, uh, I go to bed 11, 12, something like that, 11, 13. You know, yeah. Most of the time. I'm stressed out because I'm writing for a journal article, right. I'm writing for a book and yeah. this and that. So I go and then wake up at three, four o'clock again. Yeah. So advise me <laughs> what I should what I should be doing. I can give you some suggestions. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean I think I see this a lot, especially, you know, as a physician, you're doing yeah. a lot, you're right. doing yeah. a lot of things. Plus the family at Yeah, home. exactly. And I think a lot of people have similar mm-hmm. issues of I just have too much to do and I can't relax at night. So kind of what I touched on a little bit earlier, you know, setting a bedtime routine. If you know you're gonna go to bed at eleven, you know, maybe around Around 10 o'clock, 10.30, start to shut your devices off, you know, uh, everything put it around. on do not disturb, on quiet. Okay. Um, I'm a personal fan of, you know, having a bedtime routine in terms of I like to do my skincare at that time, okay. take a shower. <laughs> take care of yourself. Yeah. But take I think, care of the wrinkles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think, um, you know, that mindfulness part can play into right before bed as well. You know, doing something, yeah, so if it's meditation, meditation, if it's yoga, yeah. something to really focus on just for you and for yourself so that you can kind of like we talked about getting rid of the clutter that we kind of run around in our head all the Mm -hmm. time um so like i mentioned before i'm a big fan of doing um breathing and you know noticing your breath breathing is a good exercise yeah so sometimes i like to lay in bed and just you know feel you know doing big belly breaths count in for four hold for one and then release for four um so exactly that can look different for you what you like to do for yourself and for mindfulness but again just having a good routine might help with the sleep Definitely. And also eat, eat some candies, right? yeah. sweet chocolate, <laughs> dark a tea, a dark chocolate, I definitely. I keep the dark chocolate yeah. because that perks up my mood, you know, when yeah. I have the... Dark chocolate, I think, has some caffeine in it, though. Yeah, it so, it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, so maybe that I might be why. <laughs> Switch to chocolate. milk chocolate or something else a milk little. Milk chocolate. <laughs> yeah. So then I wake up in the morning, I feel better, you know, because my mind is fresh. Yeah. Fresh in the morning. Yeah. So basically, like, relax before the bedtime, half an hour. Yeah. Try not to look at a screen. I always recommend, you know, reading a book or, you know, doing something else, flipping through a magazine. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or again, just that, yeah, just that mindfulness component. What is something that you can set across to do for yourself, at least for 10 (laughs) to 15 minutes? I feel like we really forget about just focusing on what am I doing for myself. Focus on yourself. And sometimes, you know... If I'm stressed out, sometimes I like to, not for night time, but during the daytime, things yeah. are, I like to go to the mall. Yeah. Look at the yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Take look a walk around. Walk style, around look. in the mall. Yeah. Just looking at the things, you know, just a window shopping puts yeah. up your mode. Have you noticed that? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, with work being so busy sometimes, I like you to make sure. To the- yeah, for lunch, I always, you know, convince my co-residents to sit <laughs> outside, you know, outside, just yeah. really break up kind of the monotony of the day yeah, and yeah. again like you know eating too I see we're always I'm me too I'm guilty of this yeah. of scrolling on my phone and looking through things while eating so just making sure that you know you're eating and maybe you're <laughs> focusing on what you're eating too can be a component of right. mindfulness and then also I, I emphasize on sweet dream yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I'm dreaming that I'm up there you know getting some uh, mm-hmm. some you know awards and things like that right whether i get them or not but it makes me feel happy yeah sweet dreams sweet dreams i like that (laughs) i think that is something also people will do um manifestations or they'll have a something they'll say to themselves that's positive like i'm gonna win awards or i'm gonna do something motivation yeah exactly that you can kind of say to yourself Mm -hmm. or in in your head to keep you know some positive um, thoughts coming so in. So one time, you know, the, I write for the Academy of Pediatrics, mm-hmm. Oakland, and all those Oakland Society Medicals. I was asked to write about passion and motivation. Mm. So I thought, how am I going to write? Would you believe when I went through the literature, so many things have been written yeah. about what are your passion, what drives you to your motivation, right. and that is stuck in my mind like what passion we have Mm -hmm. this is for everybody adult children adult senior citizen everybody right 
what passions you have. You have some passions, like you want to help others, you do want to do volunteering. Right. And then the passion drives you to motivation, mm. how you want to motivate yourself. Yeah. And the motivation will take you to the right path, mm-hmm. action. So those three things stuck in my mind. Yeah. I didn't know that so many people have written about all this. Yeah, no, but the, yeah, bottom line is passion, motivation, and action. Yeah, and I think we kind of get lost of, you know, um, and an example is physicians, like why did we become doctors? Right, and yeah, what yeah. was our motivation behind it? And kind of coming back to that, I think, right, yes. reminds us of, you know, why Some are the jobs why, that yeah. we're doing? You know, why did we decide yeah, to yeah, take yes. certain paths or do school? And mm-hmm. exactly like you said, what was my passion and motivation? And yeah. kind of being aware How of that. Are, right? yeah. so, so those are the things, you know, that is stuck in my mind yeah. since I was very young, you mm-hmm. know, even before I went to the medical school. Yeah. I want to help community. I want to volunteer. Yeah. I want to help. And that's what that's what led me to where I am right yeah. now. Yeah. And that's big because another thing that a word that was talked about a lot or still is, is burnout. It's a burnout. Um, and right. I think that burnout has been from a lot of losing that passion and that motivation for right. what it is yeah, people yeah. are doing or, mm-hmm. you know, why we're working as hard as we are or, you know, the day to day things that yeah. we do. And so. never get depressed, never get disappointed. If something is not right, try for better. Next time you will get it. So yeah. now let us talk about the the what are the is the resources? Yeah. So yeah, a couple of minutes we can spend on the resources. Definitely. So obviously, being a physician, I think your doctor is a. They show three. Okay. Okay. On the screen. Yeah. So you know, your doctor is a big resource to begin <laughs> with. Um, as a primary care physician, mm-hmm. I always encourage my par- my patients to come in for any issues that they might have. Again, if it's sleep, if it's anxiety, if it's you know just general unwell being, your doctor is the best place to start um, because even if it's not something that we can attribute to a specific, you know, say health condition, it could be something more mental related. Um, And doctors are great for resources in terms of referrals, if you need therapy referrals, if you need, you know, someone to talk to, and even resources. Resources are great in this country. We have patients, you know, it might be housing, it might be food access. Those are all things that, you yeah. know, people can be dealing with that lead to stress. And so um, hopefully physicians can have, you know, some ideas or resources that patients can reach out to. Um, but again, with our phones being such great accessible <laughs> um, devices, mm-hmm. there are a couple apps now that have come up um, that I think are really good, especially in the oh, okay. mindfulness setting of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of them is called Calm App. It has, you you know, some things that you can go through to listen to that talk about anxiety or stress mm-hmm. to kind of help yeah. someone be present. Um, so that's one that I really like. So, you know, just kind of looking online for resources as well. A lot of uh, things that I've seen are um, the helpline numbers as well for suicide prevention, right. which helpline. is also available. Helpline is very important. Yeah. So having so many resources. We are so lucky in yeah. this country, right? I think it's just having Everything. people be aware of it. Yeah. Because they're right. there. But, you know, people just might not know we, about it. Just we don't know. Yeah. So resources uh, is for, uh, for our viewers who are watching this show. It's very important to go through the resources. Mm-hmm. And they are all over. Yeah. yeah. Download the app, whatever right. you want to do. Talking about the music, you know, it works very well with the kids. hmm yeah, and I think adults too. I think adults too. Yeah, yeah, I think people. You know, when we talk about that passion, motivation. You passion, know, right. if there was a hobby they had with music for themselves, right, or yeah. you know, just even during the day. I personally really like to cook, and so I always play music in the background. Right. right um, I think it just enhances my <laughs> mood. You know, just makes me kind of feel a little bit better of you know maybe the things I'm listening to kind right, of in the background. Yes. That's very yeah. That's very important about the. But you said, you know, there are so many apps available Mm -hmm. nowadays. So we don't want anybody to be depressed 
be home for the men and women yeah. both mental health is very very important because first of all they have to take care of themselves before they take care of the family right yeah i think you know focusing on yourself is the biggest thing and it's difficult to do right because you're dealing maybe with work and school and a family and people who depend on you but like i said just coming back to focusing on something that you can do for yourself right um yeah. you know some things you know you can be stressed and you know we can work on you know, especially with your doctor, or your therapist, whoever as a team, some things do require medication and that's okay too. You yeah, know, that's true. we yeah. never, there's no stigma around mm -hmm. medications or, you know, what you need because the best thing is your health. And again, mm -hmm. your mental health and your physical health are very intertwined very and connected. Important. And so and it's important just to at least reach out and get the help that, you know, patients seek or need. And that's step number one. So talking about the sleep, you know, yesterday I had a, I had a patient who, He's unable to sleep mm -hmm. at night time. So the doctors, he goes to the doctor, they give him all sorts of Prozac, all sorts mm -hmm. of, you mm -hmm. know, anti-anxiety medication. Right. Uh, and then once you start taking, there's a severe reaction to mm -hmm. them too. So what would you, what would you advise? I advise that try to stay away from those medications. Uh. If you cannot sleep, do something. Yeah, I think we try to do conservative measures conservative first measures, for sleep. Right, yep. So yeah. kind of what we talked about, the mm. routine, um, something that is unharmful to patients in the correct dosage could be melatonin as well. Yeah. But I think, you know, if conservative measures aren't working, then it's okay to start a medication just yeah. to be aware of maybe the some side effects. But even at that point, like I said, close follow up with your doctor. If you're started exactly. on a new medication of any kind, any kind coming yeah. back to see them in three to four weeks just to check in, is it working? That is it, it not? Is anything else I think is do really important. Do you advise melatonin? I do. You do? I think as long as you, it's an appropriate dosage, obviously patients yeah, should right. speak to their doctors about it, but I've seen good um, results with the use of melatonin as well. Okay, so it, it's always better to better to first conservate your treatment with what you can do to let you fall asleep. Yeah, and, and then if, if you uh, need a medication, then your doctor should be able to should be able to, to prescribe right, something that's yeah. appropriate for the patient. I have a lot who come and saying, "My friend's on this, my friend's on uh, that." Yeah, yeah. You know, my mom's my on this. My friends are there. Yeah, so but can I do it? Too, exactly, right? which yeah. we can talk about. But it's yeah. again, it's for this person specifically. Right. But to start be conservative, like those herbs tea that yeah. helps to uh, herbs tea. Yeah, chamomile. Yeah, so basically, always stick with the conservative side of treatment for anything, right? To whether start. it is anxiety, whether it is depression, try to solve the issue. And before you decide to go on the medications, right? Yeah, uh, I, or you can do both in conjunction. You can start with conservative and start a medication. It and all both. depends on the yeah. patient's history and where their comfort levels are. Yeah. So what is your last minute advice to yeah, our viewers? Yeah, I just <laughs> want to tell our viewers that, you know, mental health is really important. And as we become more aware of it within ourselves and the people we see around us, it's just important to reach out and, you know, to your doctor, to a friend, if you're dealing with anyone. Um, and just, you know, just being aware of yourself. There's help out there for you however you need it. Exactly. So I like to thank our viewers today for watching me on the health <laughs> talk and the topic is mental health awareness in men in uh, adults yep. any mm -hmm. age with my guest speaker Dr. Nabila Khan <laughs> and I like to thank our producer and I like to thank everybody for joining my show today and until i see you have a very safe and a wonderful spring and summer <laughs> of course it is summer now no spring anymore <laughs> thank you very much thank you